Uh, so I'm Kenji Kaneda from Cloud Analytics. So in this lightning talk, I'd like to introduce LL Mariner, which is an open source platform for managing the generative AI workload. And before explaining what exactly this project does, let me first explain why we started this project. We started this project mainly because Many because uh, there's a gap in the community. Why there's much discussion around AI ML. Like this conference, after deployment of LLM in Kubernetes is still somewhat limited. This is observation based on our company's customer basis, but only a few organizations, mainly large corporations or advanced Kubernetes users deploy Kubernetes in their clusters, as I deploy LLM in their Kubernetes clusters, but the rest of the people are not doing that right now. Then the question is, why the case? Some of the reasons are definitely not technical. Company may still lack some business use case for LLMs, but people prefer such solution like uh, OpenAI, so they don't need to host LLM in Kubernetes. Well, company simply don't have budget for GPU, so that's the reason why they are not deploying LLM in Kubernetes. On the other hand, we also found cases where people are facing technical challenges. Deploying LLM in enterprise environment requires meeting high standards for security, reliability, and efficiency, and team are lacking technical solution for that. Then we wanted to kind of fill the gap by de developing LLM Mariner. Let me use some real-world example to highlight some of the technical challenges. Suppose that uh, your manager asks you to deploy LLM in your Kubernetes cluster to power a coding assistant. Fortunately, there's an open source VS Code plugin that provides coding assistant called Continue, so you can use that one. But uh, you can also use VLM to model serving. Then, at a first glance, it looks very straightforward what you need to do is to just deploy VLM container in Kubernetes, and that's all. But the enterprise requirement add complexity. For example, end user here might be accessing the Kubernetes cluster outside of the ne local networks, so you might need to put API authentication or authorization. Or efficiency is also very important to reduce GPU cost, so you might need to look for some future like efficient model management model file caching, auto scaling, and such. Additionally, API auditing API usage is also important for security or compliance reason, well, to understand the system utilization. None of these tasks are not super complicated, but uh, implementing this requires time and effort. Then what Elminer does is to address this problem directly so that the enterprise can easily deploy LLM in their Kubernetes cluster without much hassle. Then again, I want to show a quick demo of LLM Mariner using coding assistant example. Again, here we use continue as a coding assistant plugin. And then in this environment, we have control plane cluster, and the worker plane cluster. And the LLM Mariner pods are running on this cluster. Then using LLM Mariner is pretty easy once it is installed. We provide a CLI, and you can use the CLI to generate the API key. Then you can open the configuration file for continue and put the API key there. So the experience basically seems the same as OpenAI. There's not much difference from that one, and it's very straightforward. Then once we put the configuration, you can open the chat window and query your code base. Then the inference request will be sent to the worker GPU cluster and process by one of the pod. Then you can use any Open, many open models. In, for example, in this model with uh, NVIDIA Lama 3.1. Then it's, as you can see, the, you can see a pretty good response from this kind of pretty good high quality open models. Then this kind of coding assistance is just one of the use cases of LL mariners, and it can be used for many other purposes. This slide summarizes the core feature that we provide for AI ML team and the uh, infraops. For the AI ML team, we provide open AI compatible API, including chat completion, embedding, fine tuning, and RAG. We also provide management of Jupyter notebooks, 
under non-LLM training job to further enhance GPU utilization. Therefore, the infra ops we provide several features for making their life better. We always rely on a bunch of open source technologies. And for example, we use BLLM or NVIDIA Triton inference server for model serving. Then we also use Q for GPU quota management. And then again, we have an integration with DEC so that people can manage users and put API authorization. And then with these features, LLM Marina provides a new opportunity too for enterprises by deploying LLM in their Kubernetes clusters. Enterprise has full control so that and they can easily meet their complex security or compliance requirement. Also, everything is open source, so you can leverage the community innovation, and the team can easily keep up with the rapid AI ML advancement. Then, the time is limited, so I just want to discuss one of the design choices we made, and then conclude the talk. One of the features we provide is the management of fine-tuning job and Jupyter notebooks. People can spawn the fine-tuning job or Jupyter notebook in their Kubernetes clusters and view log executing the container or open the Jupyter notebook from the web browser, the typical stuff. Then the question is how we should implement this. Initially, we thought about just following the Kubernetes best practices. Basically, we provide direct access to the Kate API server and then let end users manage fine-tuning job or Jupyter notebooks using custom resource definitions. But then it turned out that this approach has several drawbacks. Especially end users here are not the infra ops, but the AI ML ops or AI ML developers. For example, such end users might not have direct access to the gate API server, or if they have network access, they might not have enough access privilege to the server, API server. Or such end users are not a daily Kubernetes user, so we can use kubectl or CRD, but uh, these are not the best user-friendly API for them. The, in addition to such end user limitation, we also found difficulty in supporting multi cluster federations. We, we wanted to support very flexible deployment options so that uh, people can deploy LM it minor into separate control plane and work plane in separate clusters, or we wanted to let the user deploy a minor into across multiple GPU clusters and multiple GPU clouds. But then, to support this kind of deployment option, we need some abstraction that is not tied to individual clusters. So not CRD is not the best option in that case. Then eventually, we decide to take a totally different approach First, we decided not to rely on the direct access to the Kate API server. Instead, we implement the communication mechanism where end users send a request to the control plane, and the control plane for the request to the worker plane. Also, we decide to keep a, a maintain a kind of passive connection from the worker plane to the control plane so that we don't need to open any port in the worker GPU cluster, and then make it, make it really easy for the I mean, it's actually easy for the enterprise environment. Second, uh, instead of using CRD, we decided to just use a secret database to track functioning job and Jupyter notebook. Why this add dependency to database, which is not great, but it simplified the overall design and the implementation. For example, we can easily implement HTTP endpoint or GS endpoint just by processing data in the database. And so far, our experience and this approach was very good. It has been, it, the installation has been smooth, and why we can also provide intuitive API to end users. Then I want to finish this talk. There's so much to discuss, so please feel to reach out to me or visit the website to learn more about this project. Thank you so much for listening.